of God, which is in you, through the laying on of hands. So some denominations don't believe that laying on hands is thought that went out the old with the Old Testament. This is New Testament we read. But the Bible does say lay hands on no man's son. Don't just let anybody put their hands on you because they speak speaking in some whatever tongue they call themselves speaking in. Amen. The Bible says know those that labor among you. Yes. Know those that labor. That means those that serve in the house with you. Those that call themselves your brother and sister in law. Look at their lifestyle and make sure that it's conducive to what they profess to be before you let anybody. I'm talking about even my prayer team lay hands on you. Amen. Do I got a witness out there? Amen. Okay. That's instruction. But then there's some, my God, in the ministry where you have to provoke because they're too timid. And some of y'all, my God, because of the spirit of timid, being timid, my God, you are self-sabotaging and prolonging your purpose. Because you're going to step out of the boat, my God. My God, you keep letting fear, you keep letting other things, my God, sabotage you and rob you, my God, of moving forward with momentum. Because of the spirit of timidness. Am I talking to the right people so far? Yes, and so therefore, I'm going to talk to you about the solution to that. Because there's some things that you and I have to do in order to obtain that what God has called us to obtain. You was created to save for a purpose, for a purpose, and about a purpose. Are you listening to me? And so therefore, it's going to take you coming up out of your comfort zone. But that's just my personality. That's good too. But when it comes time to take care of kingdom business, be bold. And then when you get through with that, then go back to being tempted. Come on. Then when it's time to step out a little further, do what God got you to do and then go back to being meek and bow. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But for some of you, I don't want you to miss this, it's going to take you getting past that. Power, love, and sound mind. What we get robbed at is in our mind. As George Myers said, the battle is in the mind. And so a lot of us cannot obtain. We cannot the embodiment of the kingdom, my God, is right there in the midst of us. But the Bible didn't tell us to stay home. Yes, you can agree outside of the church. When God do it, when God bless you, come show me. Yeah. How can we say we love God but we don't love his people? That's one of the things the bishop taught me early on in the ministry. Don't, don't, don't say that you call the ministry, but you don't love the people in ministry. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, my God, love doing ministry, but they don't love the people that they got to minister to. It's a lot of churches and pastors like that. I'm not trying to make going over Christ all that and something. I'm not saying that. So don't be taking my words out of context. Yeah. To my ministers and my preachers. You can't just love ministry and you don't want to deal with the people. That's right. Because yeah. ministry is all about the people. Yeah. Yeah. If I love you, I'm going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me you love me and you know I'm going to crash and you're going to back. So are you inconsistent? True Christians, that's a follower, they enjoy the fellowship of other Christians and they love to worship God. Yes. Yes. If you find yourself constant, they don't need me. They can do it without me. You become selfish. <laughs> you become very selfish, church, when you're not properly connected to the house of the Lord. That's real talk. When a person chooses to disconnect from the house of the Lord because they got offended by whatever, you have just allowed yourself to become God, word, God unto your own self. Because the Bible says a man left to himself is doomed for destruction. Mm. When God hands you over to yourself, boy, you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because when you, when you disconnect from the body and you go sit over her, all you got is yourself. Yeah. So if my mind is already troubled, watch this woman of God. If my mind is already troubled, I'm already being defeated for whatever reason in my mind. And I ain't got no fellowship. And I ain't got nothing but my, my God, myself, my negativity, my own thoughts. I'm left to myself. Look at the scripture. When you're left to yourself, you become your greatest enemy. Yeah. So that's one of the attacks of the enemy to get you disconnected because in her is strength. In her, come on, somebody's power and numbers. Come on, somebody. And so if I can get them all, if I can get them yeah. disconnected, if I can get them over this pity party over here, my God, she's getting weak and they're getting strong. And so what you have done, my God, that person that you have, that you let offend you, she's steady coming, he's steady coming while you steady dying. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Am I talking to the right crowd? Yes, yeah. 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 That's do you still trust God with your finances? <laughs> Amen. Come on, Dr. Miles. Well, Elder Miles, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's teaching us, my God, on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Good class, good class. I can't wait till this Sunday, my God. Yeah. My wife been tired. She was tired of me even when I was sick. It's probably why I'm free. One of the reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't struggle with my time. As soon as I get paid, first thing I do, I keep my envelopes and I put my ties in there. Stick them in my bag, which is never an issue. There's been times when we got tight for pastor. But I can pay my tax. Amen. Amen. That's why your young pastor can stand before you today. You don't have to draw a salary for y'all. Because I understand the principle. 
principle of tithing and giving. That's why, Pastor Lori, every chance I get to bless your husband, I bless him. Every chance I get to sow in his life, I sow. When God can get money to you and he give money through you, you would always make sure you have resources. Amen. See, the reason why some of you can't get nothing because you're too stingy. Soon you get a hit, soon you get soon you get a little, little increase on your job instead you thinking about investing like he's teaching us. I'm sitting on it, my God. First thing you want to do is go get a micro course first. But those with a passion for Christ support the spread of the gospel and the advancement of God's kingdom. Get that off your mind where with the pastor driving. Well, I had all my cars and stuff before I even came to church. All my stuff been paid for before I came to church. I'm trying to help somebody. Come on, come on. She trying to say, so a lot of us, my God, we self sabotage our blessing. Because we wonder about what somebody going to do with the money. As I told y'all before we started going home for Christ Church, we had we got a CPA. Her name is Denise Mason. Denise Mason. We had a CPA, my God, before we ever birthed and opened up one door to going home for Christ Church. Every one of our financials is turned in every single month. My God, every dime is accounted for in this church. That's integrity. That's what Bishop told me. That means that people can trust you. Some people don't get a CPA to five years in the game. Mm-hmm. Your stuff is accounted for. I have people I have to answer to. I got a board I got to answer to. I ain't, I ain't hiding on myself. I got my board and I got a high board. A husband sits on my highest board. Pastor Manny, y'all know who my Peter James and John's is. It was a time, elder. Let me help you, elder. I'm trying to help my church. That's why I share my life. It was a time soon as I get some money, I would go straight to the dope man. My, my, my wife, y'all know the story, gave me a dollar and some change to go buy my Ela and you do some bread. My, my, my wife gave me a dollar and some change when the bread was a dollar and some change to life. While I was standing in French quarters after on 51st St. Louis, 60 wherever that's at, she took, gave me some money to go buy some bread for my children. The food was on the stove. I got the money, the dollar and some change, caught the bus, and when I know she didn't see me for a whole week. I'm not saying it to make you laugh, I'm telling y'all. You can God can take a man from that street to that man to that. You're going to ask somebody. You're going to ask somebody. You're going to ask somebody. I took a dollar some time to feed my kids. And when we spoke dope, they see the city for a whole week. You better ask somebody. That's why I go so hard for God. That's why I still be shot for God. I told you, anytime your conviction, watch this woman of God. Tomorrow, like, listen to me. Anytime your conviction get lowered in a five as a Christian, you're in trouble. Your conviction should always be a six and above. And six is still too low. Because when your conviction get lowered, you start entertaining stuff. If I'm going to keep feeding, as I told y'all, son, I got to feed what's feeding me. So I got to keep feeding my spirit. Anytime I'm not feeding my spirit, then the stuff that, I, that I'm not focused on now, all of a sudden I start thinking about you know what I'm trying to say? I'm always standing before y'all telling me I've been set free and I'm clean and sober. Quit, quit, quit seeking God and watch what happens. Quit flipping the pages and, and see what me and trying to get at you, Luke. Come on, somebody. Let your conviction get low. And see, some of us, and I'm moving on because I've got to fix it. Some of us have allowed our convictions to drop. It was a prayer. Set on your mind, you go back. Y'all be y'all catch me, you can't advance, but let the spirit of guilt. Get in your thought life and then you go back. Yeah, 
When somebody said he's talking about you when you're driving somewhere and you go to the beauty shop, come on, get your hair done, everybody looking at y'all crazy because the woman of God is sitting up there lying on you, talking about you, thank you all this and that. So if you go in a barber shop, you can feel the tension. My God, so don't for you self sabotage just to be a friend so nobody have to look at you crazy in the barber shop no more. Out of beauty shop. Boy, you get that person that much authority in your life, but the devil is alive. And you look at somebody like me, my God, you will not give nobody but Christ that level of authority in my life. You get envious and you get jealous and you self sabotage. They don't take all that. Just remember your lifestyle when you go on hall for Christ will bring conviction. There's some people that see you suffering now, Reggie, but the more you become like Christ, they're going to fall off. You ain't got to run them off, they're going to fall off. And let me get ready to get out of this. Our time is on hand. Let me tell y'all how. I told y'all what, let me tell y'all how. How can you fan the flame? Uh, how can you stir up the gift? Listen to this. Paul wrote, do not neglect your spiritual gift within you. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. People will take notice of you when you're making progress. People will see the evidence that you're seeking God, that you're thirsting after God, that you're hungry after God. You ain't got to say nothing. The Bible says, let another man's mouth or lips praise you. You got to say, now just serve God. And if you serve because you want, you want accolades or you want to be patted on your back for man, woman, you want to go there. I'm going to tell the truth. Now, <laughs> am all right? Come on, somebody give God a hand. I'm through, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. Repent. Repent. That's the most important thing. You got to repent. What's repent? It means you got to think different. Quit justifying. Quit making excuses for why you have become cold. How you why you become inconsistent to the house of the Lord. Well, I work. Well, who told you to take that job? Like I teach my son, my God, the counterfeit always show up before the real. Yeah. I said the counterfeit always show up for the real. Some of y'all, y'all let y'all situation speak louder than purpose or the first thing to come. Oh, you went for twelve dollars or thirteen dollars and you take it. But now you can't get to church on time. Now you can't get to church. You're like, come on, somebody, because you you being dominated by that furrow job. A divine strategy of the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy. For a dollar, 25 cent raise. You sacrifice your soul. Well, you don't know my circumstance. Everybody ain't got it going on like you, Pastor. Well, I pay the price to get to them. Be disciplined with your money. And quit letting your credit cards speak loud and purpose. You know you can't afford it, quit spending it. Quit getting you a, a, a $300 hair and weave and all this stuff. You know you can't afford it. Put it up in the ponytail and keep it of your life. He must. Become the center. Church, you know, sometimes I understand that we sometimes, Pastor, kind of get going and we go over a little bit, but I love y'all. And y'all know that. I say y'all that all the time. Not only do I tell y'all that, I show y'all that. I don't ask y'all to do nothing that I don't do. I sweep, I mop, I empty trash. I pay my tithes, because I tell y'all to pay y'all tithes. You know why I tell y'all to pay y'all tithes? Because God said pay them. I'm not going to ever ask you, Reggie, to do something that your pastor's not going to do. That's not good leadership. 